Now, let's imagine that we have two appointments with people in our church today. First, there's an elderly woman who's living on Social Security, and she has uh, no family. And then secondly, there's a middle-aged man who's a successful businessman. They both want to come in and talk with you, and you're their pastor. The woman sits down, and she says, she's the first appointment, she says, Pastor, my cupboards are bare. This $2 is all I have. I don't know where the next meal's coming from, but I feel God wants me to put that $2 in the offering, wants me to give it to the church. Now, what would you tell her? Now, seriously, what would you tell her? Well, maybe this. That's very generous of you, dear. Uh, and God knows your heart, and he really appreciates that. But God gave you common sense, didn't he? He wants you to eat. Uh, so hang on to that $2 and buy food with it. We have a deacon's fund for people just like you, in fact. And God wants us to do the sensible thing. At most, if you feel like you've got to give, give 20 cents of that $2 to the church, but, but no more. Okay, your next appointment is with the businessman, and his company's growing, and he tells you, I'm planning on tearing down my old warehouse to build a bigger one to store up some more inventory, and my goal is to generate enough money to put it in the bank and retire early and do some traveling, do some golfing. What do you think? Well, you might say, sounds good to me. I mean, you've worked hard. The Lord's blessed your business. He's provided this money. Hey, if you can save up enough to take care of yourself for the rest of your life, go for it. I hope one day I'm going to be in the position to do the same. And then you might throw in, you are tithing, aren't you? Now, doesn't our advice to the poor widow and the rich man seem reasonable? I mean, what would you say that would be much different than that? What would Jesus say? Well, of course, we don't need to speculate, because Scripture tells us exactly what he said. In Mark 12, it says, Jesus watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. And in the original Greek, everything means everything, and all means all, and that's why it's translated that way, right? Everything, all she had to live on. Now, did Jesus say she was unwise to surrender her only remaining resources? Did he say, oh, don't, oh, no, you know, use your common sense? No. He gave her an unqualified commendation. Jesus considered the woman as wise. Trusting God is both virtuous and wise. And he sets her up as a model for his disciples to follow. And yet, if she had come to us as spiritual leaders, likely we would have tried to talk her out of it. We would have tried to talk her out of what Jesus commended her for doing. Well, what about the rich man? In Luke 12, we meet a rich man. Jesus said to him, to the people he was talking to in this context, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Then it says, a rich, this rich man said, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my grain and my goods, and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry." Now, we are not told that this man gained his wealth dishonestly. We're not told that he was a thief, a murderer. Uh, he may have attended synagogue weekly, for all we know, visited the temple. He might have tithed, he might have prayed, as most Jews did. He worked hard. Now, like any other good businessman, he wants to expand. His goal is to accumulate enough wealth to retire early, relax, and enjoy himself. Plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. It doesn't even say eat and drink to excess. Just eat, drink, and be merry. Well, does that sound familiar? It should sound familiar. It's the American dream. And it's not just the American secular dream. For the most part, among us as Christians, it's also the American dream. But what did God have to say to this man? He said, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? You know, it strikes me that Jesus said, 
he was going to prepare a place for us. And then this man, he's talking about what he has prepared for himself. And then Jesus added, This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. So by our standards, the the, the widow's actions seem unwise, the rich man seem wise, but God declares the poor woman eternally wise and the rich man eternally foolish. And so it's probably a good thing that you and I were not the pastors of the poor woman uh, or the rich fool, because uh, with us at the helm, history could have been a lot different. Uh, So do you see how our beliefs about money and, and, and wisdom are not only radically different from God's, but often they're diametrically opposed to them. So either Jesus got it wrong, or somehow we've gotten it wrong. And and I'm putting my money on us getting it wrong. Because I just don't think it was Jesus, and I know you don't think so either. I like the way David Livingston put it. He said, I will place no value on anything I have or may possess, except in relation to the kingdom of Christ. If anything will advance the interests of that kingdom, it shall be given away or kept. Only as by the giving or keeping of it, I shall most promote the glory of him to whom I owe all my hopes in both time and eternity. Notice that he didn't just say the giving, but the keeping. We not only give to the glory of God, we keep to the glory of God. And anything we keep, we hold loosely. Because as as Martin Luther said, Anything that I have laid claim to, I have lost. But anything that I have given to God will be mine forever. Now, 